Hey, thanks for joining us. In this episode, we uh, are following up with our Cuddyback series, and we're putting some conclusion to, Tim, you've had some time to uh, experiment with p your cameras and, and pictures and things like that. So stay with us in this episode. We're going to talk Cuddyback, everything about the Cuddyback system. Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses, a podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Hey, if you like what these two dumbasses are doing, please hit the like button and subscribe today. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Joel, we got an exciting episode today. What are we going to talk about? Yeah, um, we you went all in on this cuddyback system uh, months back. And, uh, you know, it's midsummer now and you've had a chance to get them out and test them and things like that. So we promised our audience that we would revisit this and and uh, determine what you've learned so far. Yeah, I would say I'm all in. You're all in. <laughs> all in. You, you, you were all in when you bought them uh, based on what you bought and the price of them. But but. So let's let's get into it. I yeah, mean, let's, what, let's do a recap then. Yeah, so, I know you've put some thought into this, so I'm, I'm curious to uh, understand what your thoughts are. So we have eight cameras, eight cameras plus a home camera today that are currently deployed. Um, I'm trying, to, and part of the reason I started to look at uh, this type of a solution is, is I had tried Spy Point. Um, I was not very happy with the cellular Spy Point cameras. It, you know, the $8, $10 a month, it's not that big a deal. I think it's very reasonable, but I was not happy with the performance. Uh, nor the customer service experience, but that's a whole nother episode in itself. So hence, I went all in and now I have these eight cameras plus a home camera for, for Cuddyback. And just for those who've not seen those other episodes, um, I did not go the cellular route. I went with... Um, Basically, it's like a setting up your local area network. And so there's no monthly fees. It does not come to your phone, but it goes to a home camera. My home camera is literally 50 yards from my house. So what and how it works is all the cameras then are constantly uh, sending signals uh, to that home camera. And again, I'm not gonna go into great detail, but basically you're daisy chaining these cameras through and so they're all communicating to each other. And as you know, um, if that camera's constantly, you know, dee 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 communicating, what's gonna end up happening is you're using up a lot of power. So I think that's a good place to start. So what I chose to do, well, let me first off, it's working well. I have a mate, I have eight cameras deployed, like I said, right now, and I have solar on every single one of them, a solar panel on every one of them. It's working well. Uh, you have two options, two options to put for a backup power for your camera. You have solar, or they have another apparatus to where you can actually bolt it on the back, and it's basically 4D, I think it's 4D batteries that come on the back of this camera and give it a little more girth and a little more power. I chose to go to the solar route. Now, the solar panel comes with one, I think it's 7.2 volts uh, battery pack already in it with the option of buying another one. So again, I'm all in. So I bought an extra bank for every single one of them. So oh, wow. all, my bad, all my cameras have double solar battery packs. Now I ran with just one in the winter and I didn't have issues. But the whole yeah, you didn't have issues. I did not. Okay. But we're going into season. We're going into season, and if one of those cameras fails in your daisy chain, your network starts to fail. You don't get cameras beyond that. So, what I'm trying to get to is I don't want to go out into my property. I want those deer to feel feel safe, and I want to be able to get my pictures. So, it's an extra twenty four bucks. So it's probably a good time to talk this. I went out and looked for to try to find a cheaper battery that I could get so I wouldn't have to buy through Cuddyback. And I bought two sets, two different sets. And, and the issue is, is this connector. And 
you're not going to, I did find the batteries elsewhere, but you're not going to find them any cheaper than what Cuddyback's selling them to, to you for. So what I would tell you is buy from Cuddyback. It's like 24 bucks. Just bite the bullet. If that's the route you're going to go and don't buy those extra batteries elsewhere. So Tim, uh, just trying to keep on topic here. Um, so you, you literally have gone like all in on the solar and then additional battery pack on top of it. Um, any insight or experiment for our audience here that, you know, is in that decision making point of, do I go solar? Are the battery packs in the camera good enough? Did you, any, any experience on how long the batteries last inside the camera? Yeah, so I did try just with batteries without the solar. And it's going to run through them pretty quick. Uh, and it's not the amount of pictures. It's the constantly being in connection from a radio frequency perspective that really eats up those batteries. So my guidance to you is, is you're going to need some sort of a backup. So some kind of external power source uh, other than the camera for it to work for any extended period of time. Yeah, I had a neighbor who basically, in fact, <clears throat> I bought a couple of these cameras from him. And he was putting lithium, this takes, I think, 12 lithium double A's. And uh, he said it was eating him like candy. And uh, obviously that adds to your expense in a hurry. And I would rather go all in. They have a good warranty system on them. Uh, go all in and just prevent having any problems. Meet your, object meet your objective. Yeah, and I, I, know, I know the answer to the, my question is... is pretty big because it depends on what camera if it's part of a link all the other cameras are linking to that camera and that camera is communicating back home i mean it's using a lot of power every day every every minute right yep versus if it's a the one on the end of the chain that's only sending information once a day or whenever it's using a lot less uh power power right Correct. so okay cool cool so now here's some of the challenges <laughs> now going the solar route uh where you want to put your cameras is not necessarily solar friendly. So that's been a challenge for me as I deploy these cameras. So there's some solutions there. You can actually put some posts out and then out that are out in the sun, maybe not exactly where you want, but if you want them in the woods, you're going to have another solution. Uh, because you're not going to want to deploy these in the middle of the woods with no access to sun. <clears throat> So do you think that may be where, and I know you didn't get, go this route, but uh, where the, the D-cell uh, battery pack might come into play? Correct. Okay. So uh, I think that's from a power perspective, covers that. Uh, so let's, let's keep going on. Yeah. Uh, so part of the thing that, uh, that Cutty Beck comes, they give you... Uh, a tree accessory and then there's another piece that comes with that, that that ties around a tree this goes around the camera and then this is on the tree and you basically hooking this camera actually right on there like that and uh, it works okay I wouldn't call this super robust um, but it works um, yeah this is what you're gonna use just because it, it it's best set up for this camera but uh, you might end up getting a couple extras of these later down the road. It does have a, it. Does the camera have a tripod mount on it? Um, if you wanted to mount it um, on the bottom or anything. I am looking not on this one. Okay. Not so on this you, one. So you're you're pretty locked into this unit. Yep. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so another thing that they give you as part of your you know I guess we're still on the solar. They give you these cords. So I have, they give you two cords that come with your solar, and they also give you two brown cords. So actually, I guess it comes with, yeah, it comes with the solar. And so the brown cords are for solar, and the yellow cords are if you wanted to hook it up to your battery backup. So I was thinking when I put these up, it's like, oh man, that's great. So now I have double the cords. I've got spares. Well, not not so. They've actually made these cords and these connectors distinctly different. And I don't know why they do that, 
Uh, so if you want to think about the thing that makes me upset, that's the type of stuff that makes me upset because they're already incurring. They're sending me three cords that I'm not going to use, right? So why not just give me three extras? Why don't you make it a uniform connector and not force me into buying? And then even from a manufacturing perspective, to their point, you brought this up earlier. Uh, hey, it's one less thing I got to inventory. It should be simpler to produce. I mean, so that's that pisses it's me. It's an opportunity. Yeah. It's an opportunity for, so, from a cutty back standpoint. Certainly a nuisance item. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's, well, good feedback. Good feedback. When you go to pull the SD card from the home camera, it what it provides you is a status page and I'm not going to go into great detail status page and then it gives you a status of all, the, uh, of all the cameras and then pictures well anyway I thought I had an issue and uh, we'll put that up in a, another episode in the future we'll go in more great detail so I thought I had an issue with the cameras because I've been trying to get them out and work out the bugs before season starts and uh I thought I had an issue, so I called up customer service. And I got to tell you, I was pretty happy with customer service. I had customer service. They actually engaged somebody from IT to help me. And we were communicating, sending files, and they were, they were very engaged. So I would say my customer service experience so far was very good. And, and that's a big deal because, I mean, I, like I said, I've invested a lot. So um, if they didn't, I would tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's a big deal if you're trying to get a hold of. Uh, uh, you got, you know, you need an answer for a problem. So good. Okay. Uh, so so now I set these up, and and if you can look back into some one of our other episodes on how you set these up, and uh, during my customer service experience, they said, hey, we had this set up exactly right, and one of the other items they said is a hey, use the easy. There's an easy menu setup. Always use that. He said, he just said it's it's a whole lot easier and it's almost foolproof. But as I set every camera, one of the steps that you do is to check what the radio frequency connection is to one of the other nodes or the home camera. And at the time, my radio frequency was anywhere from 99 to 58%. All good, really good. And Tim, this frequency number that you're looking at is is the signal strength between is it going to be able to connect with another camera or the home or not? Hundred percent. Right? It goes exactly from zero right. to a hundred is the yeah the metric. Okay. Yep. And so when I was seeing fifty eight to a hundred, I was pretty happy. And what where I'm at today? So now for my property, we have rolling hills, valleys, woods, etc. So when I installed, the lowest I had radio frequency, as I say, was 58%. And now, as I've gone through and started to get my status, I'm getting them as low as 12%. So something's changed, and I, I believe it's as the grasses, the trees, etc., mature, more barriers are in a way, and it's, it's inhibiting some of the radio frequency. But I would say trees and the valleys are big deals as far as uh, line of sight. I've got some that are probably a third of a mile, but it's down in a big valley, and it impacts the signal quite a bit. I was going to add, maybe, this, maybe you've answered this. Um, the way your sister, your eight cameras that you have set up here, uh, from home to the furthest camera away, how far, uh, how far do you think it's away, if you had to guess? Three quarters of a mile, I think. Probably. I'm not sure where you have them all, but, but probably the farthest ones. The, I mean, you've got and you've got it all 100 and some acres here, right? So I mean, um, you've you've got cameras at the very edges uh, of of both property lines. So yeah, half mile at least, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. And so I mean, I do have one spy point that works. I might incorporate that into one of my areas. It's uh, probably negligible negligible in uh radio frequency area but other than that i i think this is going to work yeah so again so far so good and, and we're talking 
what month and a half? How many how many weeks of uh, testing so far? Yeah, probably not counting winters. We challenged it in winter. Uh, probably this instance, it's they've been out there at least four weeks now. Okay. And then I think you had two original ones that you put up in I lose track of time, but February, let's say, right? Yep. It's cool. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So so far so good. Any other um, criteria that you've got to evaluate these? Uh, no, you know, like I said, we're going to do another episode on how to interpret the status screen, uh, and that's why that was my customer service experience. I think it's more valuable that we look through that in great detail and go through so it explains. There's no place on the internet in the manual that explains that, and uh, we'll go in greater detail for that. Yeah, and then I'll just put a shameless plug in here. We we do have at least two episodes and possibly even more episodes as far as we've talked about setting these up and c connecting them and and uh, updating the firmware and things like that we have all of that on some previous episodes so we'll include that channel uh it's really a, a whole envelope of uh, episodes we'll include that at the end here that you can click on that and if you want to look, go back and reference those episodes yep cool and I think it's it's worth noting. I mean, if you guys really like, or guys and gals like what we're doing, I mean, really appreciate you guys taking time to watch our episodes. But we could really, if you like what we're doing, hit a like, and even better, support-wise, subscribe to our channel. really helps us. Yeah, for sure. So, Tim, I guess uh, kind of the last topic here is, is, you know, when the rubber hits the road, you know, a lot of different ways you can ask this question, but would you do the same thing again? Would you recommend people getting into this cuttyback system? You know, uh, what are your thoughts? So given, so obviously I've not tried all of the, all of the uh, cellular cameras out there, and it was not something I wanted to do either because it's pretty expensive. So I would say as of right now, I would do this all over again um, if you can afford it uh, because it's not, it's not for the weary. And uh, I mean, we're probably sixteen hundred plus dollars all in. Eight cameras, solar, the whole deal, right? Yep, yep. And uh, plus probably. And uh, but there's just not that the technology out there to provide this kind of solution. They are the ones that have it right now. And like I said, customer service, the warranty seems to all be very good. So. Yeah, I would do this again. Okay, good, good. Well, I mean, you've got a lot more experience with this uh, since we've installed them. But um, again, I, my comments would be is, is just the cameras themselves, helping you set them up and touching and feeling them. I mean, these cameras are beefier and sturdier and tougher than any other camera that uh, we've tested or had in our hands anyway. Yeah, so... I mean, I'm not sure this camera, if you put it next to, you know, our Moultrie A700 that we had as our winner last year, you know, it's 55 bucks. I mean, its shutter speed is pretty quick. I'm not sure uh, due to the radio frequency connecting back and forth, the shutter speed and transmitting pictures, I'm not sure this is going to keep up but it's going to do a pretty good job and i guess i don't need it to do i don't need to take 2000 pictures i need it to take pictures when the deer's there and uh it seems to do that yeah and we'll uh you know what let's just commit to our audience here that uh we'll you know we're a month into this full testing eight cameras on and i know you got more time on the two previous cameras but uh maybe mid season or even after the season um, we'll come back and do, revisit this um, and maybe focus more on picture quality and setup and, and features and functions and kind of things like that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, because I think that's a little unknown right now, right? Yep. Uh, fair to say. Cool, cool. Anything else, Timbo? Nope, that's all I got. Yeah, great, great review. Again, sounds like you've, uh, you've, you've jumped in, you're fully vested, and I know you're spending not only, you know, it's not the money, but uh, you're also spending the time to understand this and, and uh, doing it right. So I you know, applaud you for that. So good job. Thank you. Yeah. But audience, until till then, yeah. be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. 
We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be be safe, safe, have have fun, fun, and and get get outdoors. outdoors.